Welcome to the Charge Heads Garage. We're finally here. Showtime! Woo! And we're here to do a build on a car which is a little bit different. I say a little bit, it's actually massively different. The Homer. I'm on a mission to build a car that's comparable to my TVR Griffith 500. So comparable in performance, fun, and no driver aids. So a little bit dangerous, which is what I like. TBR started in 1946 by Trevor Wilkinson in Blackpool and since then has produced some legendary British sports cars. One of those legends is the TBR Griffith, which was made from 1993 to 2000 during the Peter Wheeler years, which was supposed to be some of the best years of the TBR brand. Earlier models of the Griffith had the 4 litre and 4.3 Rover V8, which were plenty quick enough. However, in a usual TVR fashion, they increased the cubic capacity to 5 litres and the 500 was born. The 500 started with 340 brake horsepower, 350 pound foot of torque, weighed 1060 kilograms and propelled from 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds. There was also a top speed of 167 miles an hour, if you have the balls. So what makes this build so different? Well, it's because we're doing an electric conversion. You still there? You, anybody there? You still with me? Yeah? Ah, oh, brilliant. Let's go. So why am I doing this? Well, it's because I give a shit about the environment and I'm really passionate about cars. So I thought I'd join these two things together, almost a two become one. A bit Spice Girls. So this is why I've challenged myself to build an exciting and fun car, but with a low carbon footprint, with the help of my friend, Ralph. Where is he? So here's Ralph. Hello Tim, how are you doing? I'm good. Good to you see you again. Yeah, you well? Yeah, nice place you got here. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah it's, I, like uh, the, I like the pink car. That's uh, that's a nice touch. Yes, it's actually electric, believe it or not. Ah, well, that's the way ahead. It is definitely the way ahead. And uh, the reason I've chosen Ralph to help me in this uh, in this build is because, if you didn't know, I'm not the best at anything electric or building anything. It's true. So uh, just to give you a little bit of an insight about Ralph, uh, Ralph has got a huge knowledge and uh, fantastic experience with uh, building all manner of wonderful vehicles, including electric vehicles. Isn't that right, Ralph? Yeah, I've been mucking around with electric vehicles since about 92. Um, so it goes back a long way. And I've always thought it's the way ahead. Um, but now we've got so many parts available to us to um, retrofit to older vehicles, we can make some really exciting vehicles. It's, uh, it's a fascinating time to be in this industry, really. And the reason uh, Ralph is uh, so important to me is the fact is focus on quality and uh, not to mention safety, because safety is a massive part of this yeah. EV conversion build. Um, two things that the TVR has never ever had, safety and quality. But this is gonna change. <laughs> this is going to change yeah, with the help of Ralph. It's going to be a revolutionary TVR. It really is. You'll have safety, you'll have quality and reliability. You've clearly got some interesting ideas. So, what's the plan, Tim? The plan? Well, we already have a car. Have you? What is it? It's a TVR Wedge 350i. My God. Yes. The TVR Wedge, better known as the Tasmin, was launched in 1980 at the Brussels Motor Show. Designed by Oliver Winterbottom, who also styled the Lotus Elite in a clat. The early cars were powered by Ford's new 2.8 fuel injected engine and after Peter Wheeler went in for a service with his car he came out owning the company and he decided to shoehorn the latest Rover V8 engine in the car. With 190 brake and 220 pound foot of torque the 350i was born. We're using something uh, a little bit uh, exciting and unique and British of course and totally unreliable. Absolutely, I thought that would be the perfect car to electrify. And hardly any space in it to put any batteries. Well, th that's why you're on board, Ralph, you see, because uh, with your engineering, uh, you know, <sighs> skills, I was hoping, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I've come to you, you see, so. Why couldn't you have chosen a van? <sighs> a van's not fun, a van's not exciting. 
Um, and the reason why I chose a wedge is because it's fun, it's exciting. You don't often see it there in many places, and it's a TVR. It'd be awesome. You don't often see them because they're usually broken down. This is true. And another reason why it should be electrified so more people can see what a TVR looks like of this era. That is true. Yeah. I like that. Okay, yeah, I'm coming around to the idea. Excellent. So how far have you got with it so far? Well, um, I've already bought it. You've bought the car? That's I a good have start. bought it, yes. Very good start. And uh, I actually bought a specific TVR wedge. Uh -huh. And the reason I chose this particular one is because it had 18 owners. It's been 18? 18. It's been enjoyed previously many times. Uh, also, it's been modified. Oh, right. Yep. Uh, and uh, lastly, most importantly, it had no service history whatsoever. Right. Okay. So 18 people decided they didn't want it. Mm. The, it's been mm. modified, so they didn't like how it worked in the first place. Mm -hmm. And nobody's owning up to it, writing anything down on paper. That is one way of looking at it. But from a positive point of view, 18 people loved it and they decided they wanted to buy one. They decided to modify it. I'm not even sure why, but they did. And there's no history. And the good thing about it having no history is none of the uh, purists are going to be upset with me, you know, electrifying it and taking the engine out. I've never been worried about upsetting purists. Oh. I view it as a sport. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, when's kickoff? Yeah, excellent. It's about now, isn't it? So you bought the car? Yes, yes. Have you done anything to it yet? Yeah, we've done, we've done a few bits. Uh, as some might see in my previous episodes, we've, uh, we've already taken the engine out with the help of my friend Stuart. She's alive! Uh -huh. uh, we took the exhaust out, took right. the fuel tanks out, uh, the fuel lines and everything. So oh. it's, it's, it's ready to be uh, uh, played with. Uh, ready to be electrified. Well, that's so, a fair chunk yeah. of work. Have you got any of the parts to convert it to electric yet? Uh, no. Oh, yes. Look at them bad boys. No, I haven't. But I'm going to be using used parts, uh, utilising where I can, put it that way, just to reduce like that it. carbon footprint. Yeah, yeah, recycling at its best. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to be one of the greenest electric cars <laughs> on the road. Green speed. Hmm. Green speed. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yes. And uh, I've even come up with a name for it. Really? Yeah. What's that then? Well, it's a TVR wedge. It is. Electric. Yes. So it's a wedge E. Oh, God. But didn't you like that? That's genius. Would you prefer T-E-V-R, perhaps? Moving on. Okay. So uh, when are you going to get the car in the workshop? Um, well, shall we, uh, shall we roll it in now? Okay, okay, let's do it. So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? No, mate. No? No. Oh. It's, I mean, all the fiberglass is all crazed. There's chips in it. The windscreen's broken. I mean, what were you thinking of? Well, it's, it's character, isn't it? There's character and then there's broken. Well, you know, that's, that's why it's in the garage, to get fixed and, you know, tart up a little. Oh. But yeah, no, she's, uh, she, the thing is, the thing is about this car is structurally it's sound. And as you know from TVRs, they're not often structurally sound. Very and, rare. Yes, and the chassis is something to watch out for on these. So yeah, maybe on the exterior, she's not looking the best you could. So you think the chassis won't just turn into powder when we lift the body off? Shall we have a look under the bonnet and have a look? Okay. So you've already taken the engine out then. There we go. Yep, it's definitely missing. It's definitely missing an engine. Yeah. Yeah, I managed to find a SD1 owner who needed an engine. So that's been recycled also. Excellent. Yeah. Nothing goes to waste. I Absolutely. like it a lot. Absolutely. And gearbox, of course. Well, there definitely seems to be a big space here, but it's a funny shape. Yeah. And I think that's going to give us a challenge. Oh dear. Because batteries are sort of oblongs. Yes. And no. this is sort of wedge shaped. And um, yes, I think we're going to have a bit of fun trying to get everything to fit in there. Oh, fantastic. A fun car 
and the challenge fun to make it as well. It's double fun. Fun, fun, fun. A bit like the Beach Boys. No. No? No. No. Shoot. Right, OK. Well, there's a good amount of space in there. That's, that's optimistic. How, how much battery did you want to get in it? Well, the ideal is to put not too much weight in the car. So what I wanted to do was try and keep the weight to around about the same weight as the original car. However, I do want a fairly decent range, Ralph. Is that possible? No. Oh. <coughs> so that idea then, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, well, the tricky thing is, obviously, we could put a very small amount of battery in and you'd have a very small amount of range, but a very small weight. Okay. Or we could put a lot of battery in for a lot of range and a lot of weight. Hmm. What we're going to have to do is work out what's the best compromise to give you enough range. It's all about the balance. It's all about the balance. And also the balance of the car to make sure it's not too nose heavy. Although, you know, TVR are by well, design normally a little nose heavy, aren't they? Yeah, well, I can tell you for a start, you won't get, for the mileage you're after, you won't get all of your battery in this space anyway. No. So we're going to have to put some more battery somewhere else. So let's have a quick look at uh, what sort of space have you got in the boot? Uh, you know, get a week shopping in there. Oh. Come on, have a look. Right. Come on. Oh, that doesn't sound encouraging. <laughs> Ah, there's loads of space in there. No, there isn't. No? No. no. How big are these batteries? Like, like a few Duracells? No. No? No. no. Um, it takes up the entire floor pan of most cars. Well, if we've got two battery packs, that, that'll work out well, won't it? Yeah. The other thing is, when we put the battery packs in, we're not going to put any of the battery in front of the front axle or behind the rear axle. Ah, right. So we don't want it to handle like a 70s Porsche then? You don't want it to handle like a 70s Porsche, but also, should anyone decide that what they really want to do is crash into you, we don't want your crumple zones being full of high voltage batteries. No. That might cause a problem. Yes. A fire? Possibly. Heat? Yes. Danger? Yes. No oh dear. So always we put the batteries inside the wheelbase. Right, okay. So there's a little bit of space above the rear axle there we might be able to use, but okay. it doesn't look that, that great. Well, when we took the um, fuel tanks out, there mm. was quite a, few, quite a bit of space under there. So ultimately that's where the batteries are gonna go where the fuel tanks come from. Still leaking a little bit of the old uh, go go juice. That goes under the uh, in front of the rear wheels, doesn't it? Yes. So it's an interesting space that where the original fuel tank goes on these. It's in front of the rear wheels, but it's at an angle like that, isn't it? It's kind of a. a it's at an angle like that, isn't it? It's kind of a, a funny shape. If you say so, yeah. <laughs> which makes it quite difficult to stick oblong batteries in that space. You uh, end up with right. a lot of gaps in between them. So what you've given us here is um, a problem. Uh, a challenge. Oh yeah, that's a right, big, a challenge. A bigger challenge. Yeah, so that's going to be more fun. Yes, <laughs> yeah, for you. Right. <laughs> Well, I think we need to have a look at the, uh, the spaces in here. So basically, we, it's time for that body cavity search that you've always asked for. We're going to have a look at the body cavities of this car right. to see where we can fit some more batteries in. Okay. And to do that, we're going to have to take the body off the chassis. Well, let's get cracking then. Mm. So, uh, do I get the uh, joy of pressing the button? Well, it's your car, mate. If you rip the body apart, it's down to you, isn't it? Bit of pressure here then. Yeah, um, I'll keep an eye on it and tell you when you've got it wrong. Okay, thank you. You're so, welcome. it's the up button then? That's the one to make yeah. it go up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. That's the clue. So, should we count it down or? Yeah. Three, Three two, two, 
one, one go! Stop! Stop, stop, stop. 